So is there now revived investor interest in Chinese companies? To answer that question and more, we're joined by Joseph Schuster, founder of IPOC Schuster. Joseph, thanks again for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. So Joseph, has the stigma been lifted off Chinese companies listing in the US? Are US investors feeling like it's safe to go back in the water now? Well, somewhat it has. I think the deals really benefit from the broad interest for specialty IPOs in general in the US. Like a year ago, the interest was very much about domestic US IPOs in small specialty industries like technology consumer, and it has been proliferating to uh, foreign deals as well. So Chinese IPOs definitely you know, uh, <clears throat> benefit uh, from this development. And obviously, overall, the US IPO markets in particular, they are hot. Deals are being done. There's a lot of risk capital available. And most also some of the performance of IPOs, like uh, VIPS shopping, has been really uh, very phenomenal, So, which obviously also drives investor interest into the space. No, no. Now, Joseph, but with regards to the accounting stigma and those issues, what has changed? Have Chinese companies been complying better with U.S. accounting and regulation practices? Or are they doing a better job marketing themselves in that light or both? Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of both. But I think what's really driving it is, is, is a change in investor sentiment towards IPOs in general. And obviously, it, ha it, it has been driven by the great performance of some recent IPOs. And um, obviously, I think also more technically point of view is the positive feedback that the investors buy an IPO today because yesterday's IPO, whether it's US domiciled or any, has done well. So on average, the Chinese deal obviously benefits from it as well. And the demand for high growth stocks is uh, high growth IPOs is very strong. Obviously, here, like a Kunara, 58.com really fit the criterion of some retail and especially institutional investors. Well, analysts say that another reason that the Chinese companies are making a comeback is that the offerings are now being underwritten by some big names like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. Do you think that that's been a big factor? Obviously, the better the reputation of the underwriters, the more kind of confident the institutional investor community becomes because obviously those um, bulge bracket firms, they do their own due diligence, they do a lot of work mm. behind. And, and obviously, some of them are actually linked to venture capitalists, which are uh, US-backed. And some of those deals are actually US-backed deals as well. So I think it makes an imp it's an important factor, surely. Yeah. Now, something else to keep in mind is, is that it's been almost a year since China suspended all the IPOs in the Chinese mainland. Still no end in sight for that freeze. So what impact has that had on the Chinese companies listing in the US? I think it has had a muted impact. I mean, the China main, uh, Chinese mainland was by itself for a long period of time. I think the trend is now certain companies, especially the banks, that tried to list in Hong Kong again. And there's a, a flurry of deals coming uh, last week and this week, actually. I don't think it really affects that much the profile of US I, of Chinese deals coming to the US. It has Always, the U.S. always has been kind of um, a way for for uh, Chinese tech deals uh, to go. I mean, the U.S. marketplace has been, you know, the key marketplace for those deals to come to. Uh, a, a China domiciled mainland company would uh, would likely list on, on the mainland, but then you know uh, the key deals really have always listed in the U.S. Right, and and that freeze of Chinese IPOs in the mainland expected to last for at least another six months. We are going to have to yep. leave it there, but thank you so much. Joseph Schuster, founder of IPOX Schuster.